Hello, 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 and welcome back, all of my beautiful friends from the internet, to another episode of the Reddit Asks Us podcast. I'm so excited to be back here with you all again on this beautiful Tuesday, or whenever you happen to be listening to this uh, episode, whether that be morning, evening, or night. So, welcome, uh, like I said, to the Reddit Ask Asks Us podcast, uh, the podcast where we read and react to comments from r slash ask Reddit. I am your host, Luke Dick. Member, uh, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever else you get your podcasts, please, please, please leave us a rating and also leave us a review. You have absolutely no idea how much that helps the show and gets the show spread and uh, gets the show listened to by new ears. Um, Member, uh, there is a feature now uh, where you can go on Spotify and you can answer this week's Reddit question by... Uh, listening in Spotify, clicking the description of the episode, and within the description you should see a white icon that says reply, and you can answer this week's Reddit question, and I will be, or I will read those responses aloud on the next week's following episode, and you will be notified when your response is published. Uh, and I want to thank everyone for, who has been doing that um, over the past little while. It's it's awesome, and I, I love to see the replies. It's It's just it's such a such a treat and such a joy. And remember, you don't have to uh, you don't even have to answer the question. Even if you want to just say something about the show, or say that you like the show, or you know just just provide any general comment, uh, please go ahead and do so. And just as another friendly reminder, I do record my episodes on either Sunday or Monday. So if you don't have your response in by either you know kind of Sunday Monday at the latest. Uh, I probably won't read it aloud on the show, and uh, just because I will have not have seen it by the time that I would have recorded the episode. So, uh, just just sort of a PSA. But anyways, why don't we hop in? So, uh, last week's episode was, what is a local rumor that you heard as a kid that turned out to be true? So, first one comes from Stressed Human, what's going on? Um, I listened to all the episodes, and now I can't wait for Tuesday for a new episode. Well, thank you very much. Uh, what do you upload with? Where do you record? I want to start a podcast and wondering on um, some new tips. So, uh, I, I use uh, Spotify for podcasters. Um, I, uh, I, I record it in my, in my bedroom. I have a Shure uh, SM7B microphone. It's an awesome microphone. You can, you can get them used for a couple hundred bucks, or you don't even need them, honestly, that microphone. You can awesome get a, honestly use an SM58 if you want to just get started. It's a pretty cheap microphone you can probably find used for 50 bucks at uh, like a you know, local music store. Long and McQuaid is what we have in Canada. Um, but yeah, that it's it's uh, honestly, I would just just start doing some research online. This it's really easy to start a podcast. Really, honestly, it's it's I, Spotify for podcasters is free. I, I I used it when it was Anchor. I don't I, I'm not exactly sure if it's still called that on the App Store. But yeah, but thanks for uh, thanks for your comments, stressed human. Um, next one comes from Phil Savannah. There was a girl who got pterodactyled at the party. It was true. Saw it with my own eyes. Uh, if you don't know what that is, listen to episode 142. Thank you for the shout out there. I, I wouldn't have been able to know that on my own. Keep up the podcast. I look forward to this weekly. And yes, I from to 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 avoid traumatizing my my audience again. You can go ahead and listen to episode 142, and Phil explains what that means. It it it's it's interesting. It's unpleasant. Um, Next one comes from the dotted emoji uh, that a teacher of mine was a groomer. Honestly, ugh, this is like it's. I hate how common that is. Like I just I I've I've I, even at my school like I've read prof like you know your rate my profs and stuff and you just hear that on some of the reviews and you're like then you go to their class and you sit in and you're like yeah I could definitely see this this person makes me very uncomfortable and it's like. Why is this why is this so prevalent in society? This is just awful. Like what the hell, man? Like we got to figure this out. We got we got to do something about this. Um but at least, you know, we got to bring them to justice. So it's a good thing that that rumor came out uh, as a, you know, a fact cuz uh, you know, we don't want to let those people get away with that. So next one comes from Snish Sums. A guy on my street, we called him Creepy Jesus. Uh, he was a pedophile, apparently, and he snatched kids while on his bike one night. The police came to his door, and he ran, but since he's old, he got caught. Well, he doesn't really seem to be that much like Jesus if that's what he's doing. So, uh, yeah, maybe maybe time for a new a new name. Next one comes from Rest in Peace Harambe. I have uh, no idea, no offense. I mostly listen for this part. Well, thank you very much. Uh, rest in Peace Harambe. And honestly, good username. But 
it's important to it's important, it's important to remember that. It's important to say that out loud. Rest in peace to Harambe. Um, and the last one comes from uh, Heidi Jan Nikolai. I don't have a story, but I like the podcast. Thank you so much. I appreciate all the replies. It's just it's it's such a treat to have uh, people just say you know wh- whatever their thoughts are in the comments. So I, I really appreciate that. Uh, and shout out to everybody who's been who's been commenting. And also, Christmas is just right around the corner. So I think maybe for this week's for next week's episode. I might uh, record that one a little bit more early because, you know, it's Christmas weekend and I want to be spending time with my family and stuff. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, for this week, why don't we hop into this week's episode? So this week's episode is uh, from our our favorite page on the internet. Uh, Ask Reddit, what has been your biggest I really thought I knew this person moment? Uh, First one comes from Aglot underscore. A guy I was kind of irregularly working with for two to three years as a student, we'd met once uh, a week in a cafe to talk through some project-related issues, was one day wanted by Interpol. Turned out he invited a random language teacher to his flat and decapitated her. (laughs) Holy shit. This is the first one? What, What are we in for, folks? This is insane. He might have been an asshole, but there's a difference between an asshole and a murderer. Holy... What what sent this dude over the edge? Is he that this project was that difficult? He felt like he needed to decapitate somebody. This is insane. What is like you? you yeah, you, I, I I think for the most part I would be pretty shocked and thinking like you 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 think people might be a little bit disturbed, but that is like you want to only think that that happens in in. The movies and on TV. That is just freaking wild, man. Next one comes from Rock Mommy. I dated a guy for a year. We've been good friends some years prior, who was very smart and studied rocket science. I studied material engineering. We wrote a 100-page paper on a new ro- on new rocket models for a research contest and did approximately 50-50 for the work. He lived in a big city, and I lived further away, so I asked him to go hand in the printed copy to the university that organized the contest. Some weeks, some weeks later, he told me he'd been to the university uh, to ask about our paper status, and he told me we hadn't been selected for the contest. So I trusted him, and we went out on a compensation dinner. A few weeks later, I saw that little bitch on the university's Instagram doing a speech on our work. He presented our work with only his name and erased my credits. We'd actually been selected, and he got a diploma and a price for our work. And I was only mentioned in the agreements page alongside his family for providing emotional support. Edit to add, he broke up with me and kind of ghosted me a few days before the speech. Edit two, since I thought this was obvious, I'm doing stuff to take him to court if the university doesn't solve, but it's a slow process. Yeah, like, what did, what, 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 what did you think was going to happen? What, like, as the dude who stole that... That literally intellectual material. Like, you just, what was what was your thought process? Like, you know what? <laughs> They're not even gonna notice. I I highly doubt they'll even notice. It's not even. It's just a. It's just a little one hundred page paper that we literally spent like a year working on. Like, I just I couldn't see. I think I'm in the clear for this one. I just can't see how that person would would discover that. Like, how would they know? I mean, it's not like they have social media. It's not like the school posts anything about it. It's not like they're really involved in the uh, science community that's around in the school. I just really think it would be very not obvious, you know. And to be honest, I, I, I know they did like half the work, but their work was inspired by me. I'm really the gr- I'm the group leader here. Okay, I'm I'm kind of the I'm the driver of this. So. You know what? It's it's not even. Nah, it's no big deal. Not they're not hardly gonna notice. All right. Yeah, hardly gonna notice a year's worth of work, just uh, taken full credit for. Next one comes from Impossible Ad, uh, ninety seventy three. I was with my partner for fifteen years. We were high school sweethearts. One day, out of nowhere, he started a fight with me, a fight big enough to make him suggest to stay at a friend's house for a night to cool off. The fight was over. Uh, me buying a male coworker gummies, gummy bears. The night turned into a week. He blocked my phone and I was unable to reach him. He came back in the middle of the night to grab things and told me he wanted to break up. I was so confused and felt blindsided. I ended up finding out he was in a 10-year relationship 
with a girl he met on like a role play discord server. He was living a double life. When I would go to sleep at night, he would be on the phone with her. He flew out to get engaged to her the next week and he blocked me. The kicker was is she was married when they got engaged. This was a year ago. She's still married and my ex is still in a relationship with her. Edit to add. I did speak to the husband over the phone. He lives in Texas and I'm in Pennsylvania. He asked me to send proof and I sent him texts and screenshots. Six months after I talked to him, he caught my ex in his house via cameras in his garage when he was out of town. This was July and he is still living with her and married. What? What, what? I hear so many of these Reddit double life stories. It's just, I don't, I don't get the mentality there. It's like, you know, yeah, we all, you know, we all juggle a couple of things, right? You know, we, we got to juggle work, life, you know, family, second family, second work, second relationship, second set of kids, you know, am I right? It's just, uh, it's a hectic go-go world we live in, right? To be honest, it's part of the grind set really though. If you really think about it, it's part of the grind set. It's like, if you don't think you can handle one family, <laughs> You know, like, like that's that you're failing at life. Try two families. Okay. Like <laughs> I'm out here grinding. All right. I work two jobs. I have two wives. I have four kids, two sets of kids. Uh, you know, just, just two, you have to have two of everything. That's really how it goes. You have two arms, right? Two eyes, two legs, two feet, I think life is showing us we need things in pairs in order to just commit to the grind set, okay? And really just 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 power through what it takes to actually be a successful alpha in this world and really make their dominance presence known within society, all right? Get, so get yourself that second wife, all right? Lie to her, you know, cheat on them because it's not really cheating if it's part of the grind, am I right? That's why we gotta take steroids, okay? A little bit of trend never hurt anyone, Okay, a little bit of just trend at the butt. It's part of the part of the part. It's all part of it. Okay, it's bigger, bigger goals we have here. All right, it's this is this is part of a this is part of a a, a process. Okay, so trust the process. What they say. Next one comes from Tarar. A girl who I worked with a few years ago ended up being one of those creepy catfishers. She initiated and continued an online relationship with one of her best friends, even made up other ancillary accounts for all the other made up friends and family. Oh my God. Uh, she was such a lovely girl too, really witty and fun to work with. Edit to add detail that isn't further in the comments. It was a small town, but there was another girl working with us who was best friends with her and the catfishy. They were both mid-teens age on summer vacation work. This happened about 15 years ago, and honestly, I can't remember uh, if I even knew the term catfishing then. The catfisher set up the account as some hot teenage boy and started messaging her friend. They ended up becoming good friends, and then it started to get romantic. This is when all the other side people started talking to her, his friends, siblings, etc. It went on for about 1.5 to 2 years, where the catfishy was updating her real life friend, her real friends about her relationship with this guy, including the other innocent friend that I worked with. Eventually, the catfishy got caught because she accidentally posted photos in intended for her actual Facebook account onto the fake catfish account. Photos included the catfishy victim and written from the perspective of the actual poster. She also accidentally included photos of her pets in her own home. Her friends were all familiar with the pets and home because they hung out there, apparently. Anything the third girl I worked with... Um, the third girl I worked with stopped talking to the catfisher and told me what was happening. Uh, reply from Saltfish. Saltfish. Some, saltfish. What is that? Is it someone... I think that's like a series or something. Someone keeps saying watch Saltfish or something. Uh, I love to know the psychology behind this. It's got to be a wicked amount of dopamine people get from behavior like this. Yeah, like what this is th that person will never try drugs. Once they find they've got this catfishing thing, I don't think they could ever be satisfied by like alcohol, drugs or anything. It's like, yeah, you know, I live a pretty healthy lifestyle. I, you know, work out. You know, I've got good friends. I don't drink. You know, alcohol's alcohol's uh it's a nasty habit. You know, it's it's not good for you. It's not good for your brain, not good for your liver, kidneys, everything really. You know, I don't smoke weed, 
smoking's bad, you know, weed isn't great for you, and, uh, you know, uh, but you know, we, we've got, we've all got our vices, right? You know, it's not like I'm, it's not like I'm, I'm, um, I'm free from, from, you know, uh, indulging myself, you know, every once in a while. So what I do is, you know, it's, you know, it's pretty normal. I, I basically have created a fake persona and I've made my coworker believe that this fake persona person loves them, cares for them, you know, is a real person. And, uh, I kind of just like, you know, just, yeah, just make it basically, uh, it's kind of like my Sims. You know, I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just creating this world, right? You know, so I just make them believe a bunch of stuff. And uh, I kind of just, you know, get them, I get them to do lots of other stuff too. And you know, I just get really involved in their lives. And, you know, it's a fun game, fun game. Just, 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 just for my own pleasure. It's just, I'm telling you, there is nothing like it. Really, just, it hits different, you know? You, why, why would you need alcohol? Why would you need, why would you need anything when you got, when you got this? It's just, I'm, I'm buzzing. You know, once I hop off that computer, I'm just, woo, damn, I'm, whew, I'm fired up. You know, I could, I feel like I could run through a freight train, you know? Wow, I just need to, do you have a phone that I could borrow, maybe data on it? I could just, you know, I'm just getting real worked up about talking about this right now. I feel like I really got to just immerse myself, you know? It's one of those things. You know, everyone's, everyone's got that vice, you know? I just got to, just got to do it. I got to do it. Holy crap, what a psycho. What is, yeah, like, what is the, sorry to harp on this for too long, folks, but what is the psychology there? Like, why, why, I don't understand. Like, what's the goal of creating a fake persona? Like, like, and then you're playing the boyfriend? Like, why? Like, play, like I said, play some, you ever heard of Sims? Like, why don't you play GTA or, I don't know, like, why don't you play some sort of other role-playing game? There's literally tons of them out there. I think messing with people's real lives is, is pretty fucked up. That's my, that's just my opinion though. Uh, next one comes from educated owl Athena. This is a funny, how did you, how did I not know this about you moment? Several years ago, I was slipping around the television and came across something or other about the band disturbed. Uh, just like that out of nowhere, my husband started basically giving me a biography of every member of the band as though it was common knowledge. We had been together about 10 years at this point, and I had no idea he even liked Disturbed, much less even knew about them. He literally never talked about them before. It surprised the heck out of me. That, I mean, the things you don't know, folks, the things you don't know. This is, uh, if that if that didn't get out, who knows? Who knows what would have happened? We, this could have been a, this could have just gotten, gone so much worse. This could have been devastating. No, I'm just kidding. But that is, that is a weird one, though. Like, I feel like I, I, it's almost impossible not to talk about my interests. Like, disturbed. Are you trying to keep that a secret? Like, I just, he couldn't hold it in anymore. Just the fact that he, like, disturbed. He's like, one day he's just sitting there and he's like, Oh my, hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to jog with you again. Because a vision softly creeping left its seeds while I was sleeping. Just breaks out into fucking the disturbed version of uh, what is the what is the name of that song? Um, I don't I don't remember. I it's the the Simon and Garfunkel song. Um, it's not coming to my mind at the moment, even though I like basically know all the words to it, which is weird. Um, but yeah, I just, just couldn't hold that back anymore. Just couldn't, just couldn't, couldn't hold that down. He's just embarrassed. He's like, oh my God, I can't <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a lot worse secrets you could be hiding from me. You know, if this is the worst one, I, I think we're, I think we're fine. Um, n next one comes from Nod, non amuser 21. When my parents divorced, my dad introduced my, uh, his girlfriend to my sister and I a day later. It obviously meant he was cheating on my mom. I never forgave him for it. Yeah, like, what, what's your mentality there? It's like, yeah, this is my girlfriend. I uh, just want to introduce you, you guys. I know your mom and I broke up yesterday. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a long time. 20 years is quite some time. But, you know, we all got to move on, right? We all have to, we all, uh, we all have to, to, to keep living our lives. And I'm not going to stop my life because your mom and I split up, right? It's just not, it's not, it wouldn't be right. Wouldn't be right. I, I wouldn't be doing myself. Uh, 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 I'd be doing myself a disservice if I did that. You know. So we we all. It's all. Life is moving. Life is changing, right? So uh, I just also. I want you to call her mom. That's just her request. 
And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to actually get you to call her mom. She, she really wants you to call her mom. And if you don't, um, yeah, I, I just, you know what? I'd call her mom. I just, I wouldn't want, I just wouldn't go there with her. She's, she's really, she's really sensitive about that. So yeah. And just, you know, to be honest, uh, it's, she'll get violent. It's going to turn bad. So just, just, just humor her. Okay. But, but anyways, this, this is just, uh, yeah, this is my new girlfriend, Sandra. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, happy new relationship. Uh, there we go. It's, uh, it's important to move on folks. Uh, next one comes from snoo doodles 290. I had a friend in high school who was so nice and everyone I knew and everyone knew him. Uh, so I was so nice to me and everyone I knew. He was a transfer student from another school. Everyone liked him. We would hang out with him in, in and outside of school, go to parties with him, etc. We came into school one Monday and he wasn't there. Then he didn't show up for a few days. No one knew what happened to him. Then we learned on the news that he had murdered someone in a gang invitation via drive-by. He shot and killed a random man who was coming out of a Walmart with bags full of supplies. Uh, it took a couple of days, but him and the driver were both caught. He has life in prison. If I remember it correctly, uh, one of our teachers who was a TA for, uh, for visit, who was our TA, visited him uh, for years after. She would bring him books to read. She still may be in contact with him. I'm not sure. Holy crap. Well, you know, it's sometimes that ha that's how it goes, right, folks? One day you're partying with someone, you're having a couple of drinks, you know, just just shooting the shooting the shit, you know, just just really bonding and then and then the next day they're on the news for a drive-by shooting. So, you know, that you know how that goes, you know, that welcome to the 21st century, am I right? It's you know, you know who who doesn't get themselves caught up in a little drive-by from now and then? Just, just you know, it's a, it's it's a right, you know, it's a, it's it's something we 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 do, right? It's something you know we do in our lives, rite of passage type of thing, you know. In some, some you know places, there's all different rites of passage, right? This one is just happened to be a drive-by shooting, okay? Sue me, you know. But you, you think you know someone, right? You think you know someone, and then it's like, oh, oh, you were uh, a violent gangster. That is uh, news to me. <laughs> news to me. All right. Um, yeah. Hope. Hopefully, we. You know. I, I think we probably probably it's better that we didn't become super great friends. You know, it's probably 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 for the best that we all didn't. You know, become become great chums. You know, I wouldn't want to have gotten the caught that caught in that myself. A reply from Shark uh, Receptacles. Mine is similar. I'll give you the short version. Boy I was at school with, we were really good mates through first and middle school, bonded over a shared love of football. I'm sure this is British, uh, so soccer if you're from North America. Uh, we went to a different high school and drifted apart. Uh, he went on to be a professional footballer living the dream. Wow. Then he got done for a dr then he got done for a drive by <sighs> then he got done for drive by shooting, not a gang initiation initiation, part of the wider gang turf war. And he's doing life now. He was a lovely kid and a successful adult, then a murderer. I don't know what happened. Oh, and we live near Wembley in London, not fucking Compton or wherever. The victim was also a footballer on the cusp of greatness, and the victim, his mum correctly pointed out, that the killer had thrown two promising lives away at once, and for what? Stupid, macho, fantasy bollocks. What an idiot. So, um, I had to read that in the British accent just to pull off the, pull off the whole vibe there. I feel like when you say British slang and words in in an American accent, it just doesn't doesn't hit the same. Doesn't quite hit the same. But that's that's fucked up though. That's like really this. You really you wanted this is like that. Um, oh, what's what's her name? The 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 the, the skater Tanya Harding. Um, yeah, Tanya Tanya Harding or whatever. She's like she <laughs> gets someone to smoke that chick in the in the knees with a baseball bat it's like really you're that you're that threatened by the competition that's your first solution maybe not to i don't know maybe hit the gym a little bit more <laughs> practice you know just you know come up have get some coaching you know get go through the the regular sort of 
I don't know, training regimen, you know, up the training, maybe, maybe just get some advice, get some perspectives, you know, resource, just, just really focus on, on, on your own abilities. I think that at the very bottom of the list is harming your competitor. That shouldn't even be like, I really don't see how that's going to work out well for you at all. You know, I just don't see how that's your first thought. It's like, damn, they beat me in that game. It's, well, it's really over, all right? You want, you want the game? You got the game, and the game's going to end, all right? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm ending the game, okay? And I'm going to win. Well, are you really going to win? I don't think life in prison is, is really winning. I think it's like, yeah, well, you, you really, have you really thought about this? Have you really weighed the, the thing? You just think you're going to murder someone or, like, bash someone's knees with a baseball bat and, like, no one's going to figure it out? It's like no one, there's no motive there. You don't think that, you know, you have a clear motive for, for harming somebody. I think out of all the types of, types of harm you could do to someone, that's yeah, pretty targeted, all right? It's pretty, you know, it's, it's not a whole lot of people that, that, you know, want to, want to get after the athletes from that, you know, competitive point of view, you know, especially with the Tanya Harding one. It's like, yeah, you want to take out her knees, really? You're going to, you're going to take out her knees, it seems like, well, it seems like there's a pretty obvious reason why you'd want to do that, you know, because they're competing. It seems like, oh, well, why don't we just take a look at who, you know, who, who who's uh, who's had a, you know, history of, uh, you know, wanting to wanting to have this person who'd benefit from having this, you know, having this person's knees blown out, you know. Um, next one comes from No Roots for Me. I met a guy in college. We were both dating other people at the time, so we would hang out together instead of going out to parties and getting wasted. He was my safe buddy, always a gentleman. We stayed friends for seven years, but we were always dating other people. Finally, when we were both single at the same time, we talked every day and decided that I would take a week off work and fly across the country to see him. My flight ended up being diverted to D.C. instead of Philadelphia. He told me to take the train up, and he'd pay me back for the train ride. So I've now spent $600 plus for a flight, $120 for a train, and I'm losing about $1,000 taking off a week from work. I get to the 30th Street station, and he doesn't pick up his phone. He didn't pick up his phone for five days. He left me stranded at the train station, even though we'd been texting all day. I cried. I panicked. I called a girlfriend from college who was able to come pick me up, slash house me for that week. When I finally reached him, laid into him, what kind of person does that? All he said was, I don't know what to tell you. People suck. Lesson learned. What the fuck? After seven years? I guess I didn't know <laughs> No, after all. Screw you. And I'm not going to say the person's name because you know, we don't want to do that. But again, what is the mentality? What, what, what's going on here? He's just like, eh, you know what? I'm not really feeling it anymore. Sorry. Sorry, babe. Not really feeling it anymore. I was kind of like, well, have you ever played Fortnite? Like, sorry, honestly, for like not picking you up. But like, the new season of Fortnite like just dropped, and like all the boys are like dropping. And I'm like, well, I could like either pick you up from the train station and hang out with you for like five fucking days, which have been so boring, or like, I I could I could drop in. All right, like I, I could loot lake, you know, I just just drop in a little bit, like just you know, was, the new season like hardly comes out ever. So I was thinking to myself, I'm like, well, I could pick you up. New season of Fortnite. Honestly, it's just and uh, you gotta understand, babe. Fortnite, it's like you're you're always gonna be around though. But Fortnite seasons, probably not. So like. You know, you you know I gotta prioritize. What the fuck? Reply from wait, 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 underscore now. I knew a guy like this. He did something similar to a friend of mine. His reasoning later was that he wanted to teach her a lesson for leading him on for years. Real piece of work. She never had an interest in dating him and genuinely viewed him as a good friend. Little did we know he was quietly fuming that she didn't view him as a romantic interest. For anyone that applauds that logic, I want you to know that he is still single and has turned into hating all women. He generally only posts about hating his life and how he's owed attention by women. My friend, and, and uh, on the other hand, is married with kids now, and her husband absolutely adores her, adores her. On a side note, her business is doing really well, too. Well, that's awesome. 
yeah, the, 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 I don't think I don't think the revenge has this intent intent that you might think it does. It's like you're really just screwing up your own life. Sure, you know, the the other person might have gotten screwed a bit there, and it's like, but really, like once you're done with that, like like are you just gonna live on that high forever? Are you just all you're just gonna like sit there and just ruminate on the day that you did that crappy thing to somebody? I'm like, okay, it's like well now that it's over, it's like now what? You know what's like just going to go back to living a normal life. And then, you know, then it just turns into, uh, well, now that I'm done this, why don't I just focus on hating women? That's usually how the story goes. It's like, really, is this that necessary? That's your logic though. For like, you don't want to be with me. It's like, you were dating other people. So was I, like we were both in relationships. How does that make any sense? It's cool. Like, oh, you like, should have known though. I was like the diamond in the rough type deal. Like that was like diamond and rough. So, like, honestly, you should, like, know. Like, you should know, though. Honestly, you should have broke up with your boyfriend. And then, like, you know, you should have confessed your feelings to me. So, you know, that's kind of, like, it's kind of what you're supposed to do. So, really, this is, like, your fault. You could have done the same thing. Well, no, because I'm, like, the guy, though, right? So, like, guys don't do that. Guys don't really, like, talk about their feelings and shit like that. So, like, it's kind of, like, depending on you to be, like, no, like, don't go. You know? Like, so, Yeah. Now, uh, congratulations, you spent, like, a lot of money and stuff. Ha <laughs> let's go. It's like, all right, now what? It's like, well, I'm kind of bored now. Guess I'll just play Fortnite for the rest of my life. Next one comes from Frequent Night 4490. Love the hell out of my husband and thought we had a great uh, Golden Lab Black Cat relationship. He was caught cheating online and having 10-plus different social media accounts, and he tried to blame it on COVID brain. When I pointed out, uh, it was uh, pointed it out was before that he got he just shrugged and said, "It is what it is." <laughs> Still reeling. What? COVID brain tried to blame it on COVID brain. Really? I think COVID. How does COVID make you cheat? I don't understand. How were you even able to cheat during COVID? That doesn't even make any sense. It's like if anything, people, you know, were were stuck with each other. You know, they were just like, okay, well, let's do this thing. Or they just broke up and went on their own. I, don't, I didn't meet very new, many new people over COVID. That's so, it's like, babe, you know how COVID brain gets to me, okay? It's the stress. And like, I was coming home and I'm like, oh, I'm so stressed out. And then I'm like, why don't I just like see other people and like not break up with you first and like not tell you about it. And I was like, oh, I think we need to see other people. But I like just didn't tell you that. So honestly, the only bad thing I did was like, just like, I just, you know, decided that I forgot to tell you about, you know, I forgot to tell you that I was like seeing other people and stuff. And then like COVID brain, you know, cause COVID brain makes you like forget. So, you know, just, that's what it did, babe. We were all stressed out and I was like, oh, I'm just stressed out. And I started seeing other people and then I just like forgot to tell you. So sorry about that. It's like, you were paying no rent. You lived with me for like a year and a half and you didn't pay any rent. You sat on the couch all day. Like, what, what, you, what? This, that, that's, that's some bullshit right there. Holy crap. Next one comes from Piranha Nut Bar. Or Nur, Nur, oh Piranha Nur Butt. Best friend 15 years ago. Paid us, paid for us to move to Colorado together. Uh, literally paid for everything. As soon as we settled into a place, he tells me he's always hated me and knew I had resources he could take advantage of. Colorado was his idea, but he sold it so well. Also, we had countless times hanging out, laughs, having each other's backs, and there was never a reason to question this being this person was being my best friend. We never fought either. That was a tough one. <laughs> okay, if you didn't like someone, you don't like were you just banking on them being like, well, okay, well, they'll they'll definitely, you know, I'll definitely this will this will be a problem when we're when we're packing up to go to Cal uh, Colorado. And then time goes on, you know, it's like, well, you know what? This will definitely be... The, the, the fact that we don't get along and that we don't have a great relationship is going to come out when we're on the drive. Drive goes well. Well, maybe it, when we're unpacking. And then finally you're unpacking, you sit on the couch and you're like, wow, this apartment's really great, yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm so glad to be, to, to be in Colorado. I, I really didn't like where we were living before. I hate you. I, I hate you. I despise every little... 
part and aspect of just you and who you are. I just, I can't stand you. I, I hate, I actually hate you. What makes you think I'd actually want to move to Colorado with you? Are you fucking serious? You think I actually want to live here in Colorado with you? What, what, would, what would even give you the inclination to think I would want to do that? Well, I don't know. Maybe the fact that we packed up everything we own, the fact that we moved together, the fact that we're here in Colorado, and not only that, the fact that this was your idea. Okay, if you hate somebody, I think one of the like last things, last ideas you, of you have and activities you do with someone that you hate is, I don't know, move in together and also move to another state together. Just, just my personal advice. That's just, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that. Venus, the sea, sea goddess. See, this is, these are the nice names. These are nice Reddit usernames. I like these ones. Uh, this one comes, uh, sorry. So reply from Venus, the sea goddess. Oddly happened to me one week into marriage number two. It took four years for them to leave uh, to follow their heart, which oddly coincided with them uh, with when I finally stopped sharing my resources. Meanwhile, due to the reproductive coercion, we had a child in common where they on multiple occasions have used as a pawn to extort money out of me. I am so disappointed that I was part of their get rich scheme. I feel so sorry for the broken childhood uh, we have given my child. Aw. Well, you're probably a good parent, so you probably haven't given your child that much of a broken thing. You know, you're, you're probably a good parent. I don't doubt that. But the, once the resources go away, it's like, yeah... So, so I've been thinking, you know, I think it just, I, I feel like I'm just I'm not receiving reciprocal sort of things. I'm like, I think I might just, you know, have control of the bank account and, you know, maybe you can get a job and we'll, maybe when we, so we can start working on being a more reciprocal relationship. I'm leaving. I can't believe you said those words to me. I seriously can't. Did you seriously say those words to me? P provide for my, provide for my, what, 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 what do I do? What am I supposed to do? How do, how do I provide for myself? I'm helpless. Okay, this is your fault, right? You, you. This is the thing. This is what this is. Uh, this is why I knew it was never gonna work out with you. All right, it's just it wasn't gonna it was never gonna work out. I know we got married last week, but I just knew it. I knew it deep down. It wasn't gonna work out. It just I, I knew you were gonna be selfish with your money. Seriously, provide for myself. How selfish does that sound? Listen to yourself. Do you even hear yourself? Provide for yourself. Have your own bank account. You know, make your own money. Really? What's wrong with your money? You know, you're, you're the one who likes working. You know I don't like working. So, this is really your fault. The amount of gaslighters out there. Uh, next one comes from Commentator. Ex-wife now, married for 14 years when she acts suspicious. Note, wife paid all her bills because she was better than me at that stuff. I know it's not an affair, no missing time, but I can't figure it out. Three months later, I confront her and she denies acting differently. She won't let me answer the phone, uh, the home phone, and we get five to seven wrong numbers a night. Can't check the mail because she runs to the curbside box. I, she runs. Jesus Christ, she's fucking sprinting. Uh, I, I take a vacation day from work, and she calls in sick, so I'm never home alone. Finally, I arrange a vacation day and don't tell her. I pretended to go to work, and she, she went to the, and she went to work. Then I came home. Oh boy, all the wrong number calls bill collectors for credit cards I didn't have. Same with the mail. My ex took five credit cards out in my name without my knowledge. A total debt of $60,000 in my name. My personal bank account was wiped out after her 401k. Couldn't jail her because we had an adoptive daughter who was glued to her hip and therapists recommended against separating to the two. At bankruptcy, uh, I discovered she was also had 80k in unpaid student loans. In the end, she took cash advances to pay the lawyer who defended her child, you know, S.A. sort of son, what? A crime we both knew he was guilty of and agreed not to pay his bail or lawyer. Yeah, he was convinced our family was, uh, and he was conv convicted and our family was destroyed. Now I don't t t uh, call her my ex, but my why. She's my why wife as in, why did I marry that trash? <laughs> Holy shit. Th that's a that's a hefty secret to keep up. Debt will follow you, folks. If it, if it's it, you don't spend money you don't have. All right, folks. You know, and like 
student loans, maybe that's a different thing because you're pursuing education. You want to go to school. You know, you're trying to you're going to try to hope to hopefully pay that off as when you get out of school. But yeah, I, I think if you want to create a healthy foundation for a marriage, it doesn't you know involve taking out credit cards in their name, unbeknownst to them, and spending I don't know sixty thousand dollars, you know, in in debt. It's just yeah. I, I, like I, I, I struggle to see how someone wouldn't see that as a big deal. It's like, babe, it's really not even a big deal. It's just, it's a little sixty k, okay? Like, sixty k isn't even that much anymore. Everyone knows that inflation, right? Like, sixty k, like we can make that. Like, it's fine. Like, it's not even, it's not even a big deal. It's like, what, what is that? Like, pocket change, right? It's like it's how everyone says. It's like a dollar, you know, it's like not worth as much anymore. So like that's the same logic, right? Like sixty k is like not sixty k. So like it would be harder to pay the 60k in in like the 50s because that was like a lot of money but 60k is like not a lot of money now so so honestly like I'm doing you a favor by teaching you about finance right right now and like inflation and stuff it's like no I don't I don't really I don't think that that's I I really don't think that that's how it works I'm I'm I I I'm almost certain that is not how that works I know what I am certain that's not how that works yeah not 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 setting up a great foundation here uh, next one comes from uh, Bellarina69. Ex-husband decided that if he wasn't a husband any longer, he wasn't going to be a father either. He hasn't tried to see his kids in two years, hasn't paid one dime of child support, never saw it coming. He was my best friend, and even though we were separating, I never in a million years would have thought he would, uh, wouldn't want to see his kids anymore. Decided that he didn't want to be a husband any longer, and he wasn't going to be a It's like, you know what? what? What was he saying? Like, you know what, this husband, the babe, I just any of a conversation with you. This husband thing, you know, and, and, and the whole father thing, I really think it's, I really don't think it's for me. I think I've done a lot of soul searching and I've just realized that this isn't my calling. It's not my calling, right? You know, like, and what are you, what are you going to do? Are you going to force me? Are you going to force me to do something that I don't want to do? Are, are you, are you that, are you that selfish? Are you that psychotic? You're really going to, are you like, you're, you're, you're going to, this is just like anything. Okay. I tried my hand. At baseball, okay, I tried baseball. I didn't like it, all right? I wasn't a baseball guy. It's just not my thing. I tried watching it, tried playing it, just wasn't my thing. This is like that, okay? I tried being the whole father thing. I tried doing the whole husband thing. Babe, it's just, it's really not my thing, okay? It's just, it's not for me. I'm not, I'm not cut out for it. So, uh, yeah, see you later. I'll, uh, uh, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find my true calling, you know, peace out. You know, like this is, you have to, if you love something, set it free. That's what they say, right? All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the Reddit Asks Us podcast. Uh, the weekly podcast, we read and react to comments from r slash ask Reddit. I am your host, Luke Dick. Remember, please leave us a rating and also please leave us a review if you're watching uh, or if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever else you get your podcast. You have no idea how much that helps the podcast. You can uh, send in your reply to this week's episode, and I will read that aloud on the next week's following episode. And just as a reminder, I might be recording next week's episode a little early just because um, it's Christmas and I want to be spending time with my family. So uh, thank you all so much again for tuning into this episode. I love each and every single one of you. Peace out. Love you. Bye.